In this video, we're going to be refinishing two lane side tables. The Asian inspired lane table is from 1966 and is in quite a bit better condition than the Art Deco style side table from 1949. I'm going to use two different techniques to remove the finishes through different means than my usual method of using quick strip. Jumping right into it, I will be using my carbide scraper to remove the finish from the 1966 lane side table. The walnut veneer on the table goes in one direction and the surface is mostly flat, so it's an ideal candidate for removing the finish. I own two different sized carbide scrapers, but they're both great. I prefer the two inch carbide scraper because I feel like I have more control, but the two and a half inch has a cool handle on it that a lot of folks like. Scraping the finish is pretty easy, though there is a bit of a learning curve, and the carbide scraper doesn't care what type of finishes you're removing. It removes paint, shellac, varnish, and lacquer. When using the scraper, it's a good idea to keep your vacuum nearby so that you can suck up all the finish debris. And you should also be wearing a dust mask for this process as well, because it does kick up a lot of dust similar to sanding. There is also a detailed scraper that has different edges to get more into the intricate areas, which I'll link below in the description. Now, I don't like using any of these scrapers on ash, elm, or any other soft woods, unless it's flat. They tend to grab into the wood a little bit too easily, and it's really easy to nick the wood while you're scraping. For that reason, I just grab some sandpaper and remove the finish that way. One of the benefits of using the scraper is that you don't have to wait to sand the substrate after you finish scraping. Everything is dry and you can easily move to the next step. It's also better to use the scraper for wood veneers because it reduces the chance of sanding through it. Next up is Antique Furniture Refinisher. If you watched my previous video, you know I generally like to use this to remove tinted lacquers that are embedded into the wood grain. I have never used it for an entire furniture piece until this one. Starting with the first thing is it's very fumey, so you should be in a well-ventilated area and wearing a respirator. You're also going to need very thick chemical resistant gloves, or you're going to need to double glove. The product is easy to use though. You just use super fine steel wool soaked in the product, and then you apply it to the furniture piece. You come back and you wipe the substrate with a clean piece of steel wool. However, I went over the entire side table twice, and I still felt like there was a thin layer of finish present which became very apparent when I sanded the side table after everything dried. It also carries a pretty heavy warning label. My takeaway from this is I will continue to use this product for small areas and removing tinted lacquer from wood grain, but I have no desire to use this for another project again. We need to give the side tables a bit more love. The 1966 side table has a pretty decent gouge on the top. The wood grain doesn't appear to be torn, but indented. The method that I've seen used for this is that you use an iron and a damp cloth to steam the wood, which causes it to raise the grain. Words of caution are, don't leave the iron sitting on for too long, you're going to burn the wood. This technique worked fairly well to raise the indent, but it did not totally remove it. The Art Deco side table had significant water damage on the top. To remove the water stains, I mixed oxalic acid with warm water. When you're using oxalic acid in its dry form, make sure that you read all of the warning labels on the bag that it came in. Wear gloves, a mask, and goggles. I applied it to the top of the side table only. 
and I let the product dry out completely. You don't want to apply it to just a section because it's considered a wood bleach. Meaning, if you spot treat areas, you're most likely going to create discoloration. I applied three coats or three rounds to the top before almost all the stains were completely removed. There was one stain from a, a cup very faintly that showed up still, but compared to what it was before, it was definitely an improvement. To neutralize the oxalic acid, I came back and wiped the surface with water three times. To finish off the tables, I'm going to apply some General Finishes Candlelight Gel Stain on both tables. Once the stain has dried, I ended up applying General Finishes Armor Seal, sanding with a 1500 grit sandpaper between the coats. For my final coat, I sanded the side table again by hand and I applied some Howard's Feed and Wax. Let's take a moment to remember what the side tables look like before and what they look like now. Make sure you stick around for the bonus details at the end. I've been seeing a lot of folks using Barkeeper's Friend as a wood bleach. Barkeeper's Friend is not intended for use on wood surfaces. However, its active ingredient is oxalic acid, which is why it works in most cases. Just keep in mind that the manufacturer doesn't recommend it, and there are other things in the product besides oxalic acid. It does really work well on hardware, though. <laughs> 